Welcome back everyone. This is our second example video on the shell method, getting volumes of solids of revolution. So we're going to find the volume generated if we revolve the region with the bounds listed here about the y-axis. So we will be revolving this direction. And my bounds are y equals 0, which is the axis. Uh, y equals 1 over 1 plus x squared gives us this nice little slope from 1 down toward the axis a bit. And we're going between x equals 0 and x equals 3, revolving about the y-axis. If we want to get an idea of the shape that this generates, go ahead and revolve. We can see that we get uh, sort of this um, peak at the top. It's sort of a, a curved peak, and it slopes down um, outward, so some sort of a hill shape type of object there as we revolve to get the volume. So if we go ahead and draw our rectangle, which we always want to do first, so if I'll just draw it, um, let's say I draw it way out here this time just to be different, so if I draw it way out here, that's my rectangle, uh, and I've drawn it parallel because shell method, so I've drawn it parallel to the axis of revolution, then we are going to figure out how to do the volume, again, based on our formula, 2 pi integral. Now, will it be x's or y's? And remember, you look at this vertical rectangle, and vertical rectangle tells you we'll be integrating dx for this problem. So I will have some radius function in terms of x. I will have some height function in terms of x dx, and we'll integrate from a to b, okay? So remember 2 pi rh, that was our uh, volume formula that we got from cylinders, if you remember in the intro video. So here we just need to plug in stuff. So our height, the length of each rectangle, anywhere I draw it, would be between our 1 over 1 plus x squared and the axis. So that's just going to be that function itself. So that is our h of x. And then our r of x, remember, is the distance from our axis of revolution out to whatever the rectangle is, any rectangle. Uh, that's going to be the x distance from the axis to there. So, you know, here it's two point something, but in general, even if I drew my rectangle here, it would still be the x value of wherever the rectangle was, how far it is from the axis of revolution. So we'll go ahead and plug those in. So we'll get 2 pi out front as part of the formula. Do our bounds last. My r of x is x here, and my h of x is the 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Integrating dx, we need x bounds. So here is the farthest left, and here is the farthest right. We are going from 0 to 3 in the x direction. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together so that I have something a bit more easy to integrate. So I have 0 to 3, we'll say x on top over 1 plus x squared dx. Now take a second to look at it and see if you can figure out how we would integrate this. It's not just a basic power rule or a definition, but it can be done by u substitution. So we're going to go ahead and uh, outline that. So I would choose here u is equal to 1 plus x squared and that would give me the derivative of that would be 2x dx. So du is 2x dx. Now, you'll notice that you could include the 2 inside if you want to make everything work out. Let's say I don't do that, and I look at this and I say, okay, well, this is just x dx. I don't have that here. I want to figure out what is x dx. You could simply divide both sides by 2 and get an exact substitution for x dx. Now we can see x dx is actually 1 half du, so that's what will go in for x dx up there. I'm going to plug it directly in, and I know that a lot of you see it's already going to reduce the 2 out there, so my volume, I will have 2 pi integral from uh, x equals 0 to x equals 3. Now I'm writing x's there for a reason. I'll talk about that in just a second. So I had a 1 half du. So I had a 1 half du. And then this is u here on the bottom. So that would be du over u. 
And the reason I've written x equals 0 and x equals 3 is these bounds were originally x bounds. So if I make a u substitution, remember that you either need to solve for u bounds or leave your bounds in terms of x and don't plug them in until you get back to a variable of x. I like doing less work, so I'm going to not solve for new u bounds. Okay, I will bring out the 1 half to go ahead and reduce with the 2. Let's at least do that. So I'll just have a pi out here, and then I will have the integral x equals 0 to x equals 3 of du over u, and hopefully that we can see this is a log rule, natural log. So we'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to actually start over here on the left and give myself a bit more room. Uh, so let's go ahead and say volume is pi times the natural log absolute value of u. And then remember these are still x bounds, so from x equals 0 to x equals 3. If I go back now and replace, remember that u was, if you look back up here, you'll see that u was 1 plus x squared. So if we go ahead and plug that in, I don't need my absolute value brackets because 1 plus x squared is not ever going to be negative, is it? We can go ahead and just write it in parentheses instead of keeping the absolute value brackets. Now that we're back in terms of x, I can just think of this as plain old 0 to 3. And then we can go ahead and plug in our bounds. So we'll have pi times ln of 1 plus 3 squared. 3 squared would be 9, so 1 plus 9 will give us 10 minus ln, be careful here, of 1 plus 0 squared would be ln of 1. Except ln of 1 we should know. This is 0. Natural log of 1. Any log of 1 is 0. So we'll just get pi times the natural log of 10. And since it's volume, again, this will be units cubed. Okay, so a little bit of shell method that resulted in some u substitution but not so bad overall. All right, hope these shell method videos have been useful for you. Good luck on your solids of revolution, everyone.